Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back from another fake Grand Order video very quickly soon after, because I <laughs> didn't think I'd have to do it so quickly. But it turns out today is the 17th, uh, no, today is not the 17th, it's now the 18th for most people. But they decided that, hey, a banner should go up, and that was when Oberon was supposed to come up, but it's not Oberon, because Oberon already came out. It's Avalon Lafay Conclusion Summoning Campaign 2. <laughs> So everyone was right, there was going to be a banner on the 17th, <laughs> just not the one anyone thought it was going to be. So I'm going to talk about the banner real quick. At this point, you should know if you want to summon on this banner, and you already have summon on this banner, so I don't need to summon on this banner because I have Morgan, and I have Bargus, and I have uh, Faye Tristan over here, uh, Trico. But feel free to tell me how you did on your summons. Uh, always nice to hear what how people do. So let's go into it. Uh, so these are the three units that are going to be on here. They were literally here, if you look at the timeline of NA actually, they were here about a month ago? <laughs> Let's see. This is when uh, she released. No, that's the second one. Wait for it, here it is. Here's when she actually released. Yeah, oh, a month later, a rerun. <laughs> it's uh, the fastest it's ever been rerun. It's even faster than I think it was on JP. Pretty crazy. Um, so let's go over the units real quick. We'll start with uh, Bubble Sif over here. Apologies if I say the name wrong. Uh, so Bubble Sif, she's a story lock servant. You can also see Tristan if you also want to see more about him. Uh, they also call her Tom Lynn Tristan on the NA side, but that's commonly known as Fairy Knight Tristan at this point. So, first skill, Grimalkin, Grimalkin A increases his own quick performance for three turns, grants self-invincibility for one turn, grants party evasion for one attack, deals 500 damage without killing the party except self, and the quick up is 40% at level 10, and a six turn cooldown. Second skill, Bless Successor EX, seal all the enemies NP for one turn. Steal their skills for one turn and then charge your uh, charge the MP gauge by 30% and a cooldown of 6. Third skill, Fey Vampirism A absorbs one enemy's HP without killing. Chance to reduce their MP gauge by 1 and charges your own MP gauge and it's 3000 heal. 100% uh, chance when it's at level 10 and a 30% MP charge and it's also on a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance EX, Riding A, and Territory Creation A. I forgot to mention, but uh, two quicks, two arts, one buster, and she's uh, an archer. <sighs> I almost forgot what archer was there for a brief second. Fetch, fail not, Laministia of Fantation. It is her noble phantasm. It is a rank E anti army, six hits. Ignores evasion for one turn. Activates first. Deals damage to one enemy and inflicts curse status for a thousand damage for five turns to them. And the MP damage is uh, 12,000 at level 1, and if you get it all the way to level 5, it is 2,000. The Inflict Evil Curse status for 5 turns to them increases curse damage to them. The charge is at level 1, it's 200% curse damage rate up. And all the way, if you get it to charge 500%, uh, it's 400% um, <laughs> curse damage rate up. So, I think she is a pretty interesting unit. She's also pretty good. The curse damage up can be used in some... Uh, fun Tico. I'm pretty sure Van Gogh has a lot of like cursed stuff that you would probably want to use them with, as well as uh, what's the name of the pervert man? Doman. Doman. Doman also has a lot of cursed stuff. I like that she's a single target unit, and usually what I'm looking for in a single target unit is stuff that can be pretty useful in a challenging fight, and she has that pretty well. She has the ability to um, reduce their MP gauge, which can come in pretty clutch. She has an ability that charges her own MP gauge. And it's by 30% every single time. The cooldowns are also realistic at 6 turns. Not bad. The ability to seal NP and seal skills is extremely helpful. And this first skill is also a, an ability that just grants self-invincibility for one turn. And then grants the party an evasion for one attack. That's really damn good, to be honest. That's really, it's really nice. I think she's, uh, she's an excellent unit. Very well built. It actually reminds me a lot of Tristan. I think she's probably actually just a crazier version of male Tristan. And male Tristan, I remember really liking a lot of what his kit did. Yeah, I love this move right here, which grants party evasions for one attack. 
Second skill, charges on, and actually she is, in a lot of ways, kind of just what he does, just a little bit more, except for the third skill, which is different, but the first two skills definitely a reference to that kind of build. So that's cool. I think she's good. She's definitely worth having. She's in a lot of banners, so if you have her MP5, you're going to get a strong-ass unit. Uh, and she's quick as well, which is unfortunate because you probably can't use her with any of the Buster or Art supports, but she is quick. And their quick is still pretty solid at this point, even if it is a, in this point in NA's lifespan, a third place. <laughs> in a very distant third place. <laughs> Actually, I don't want to get into it. But either way, if you consider the, just the three basics of Arts, Buster, and uh, Quick, and not factor in anything else like Chen Gong farming or using Morgan with just 50% MP chargers and just having at it that way, just the, the three basics, it's probably the third. And it's not, <laughs> it's a very clear third place. <laughs> but anyway, still a very cool unit. Next, Bardigist aka Lady Gawain, aka Tamlin Gawain, and she is a saber. She is one quick, one arts, three buster, aka she is a buster gorilla. First skill is numeral of the Saint B. Increase on attack by 18% for three turns. Increase on buster performance when on the sunlight battlefield for three turns. The sunlight buster attack up is 28%. Second skill, the Wild Rule A, increases own buster performance for three turns, grants self survival of the fittest buff for three turns. Uh, survival of the fittest recovers on HP by 100%, by 100%, that would be insane, by 1000 when normal attacking. Removes one of the latest buffs from your enemies when normal attacking. If successful, remove the buff, a 500% chance to reduce their defense by 10% for three turns. The buster up is 30% at level 10. Her third skill is Foul Weather A, reduces party damage taken by attacks for 3 attacks 3 turns, grants self-regeneration buff for 3 turns, grants party NP gauge every turn for 3 turns, the damage taken is 1000 and the MP, MP up is 15%. And the cooldown is 7, the second skill's cooldown is 6, and uh, it's 5 for, level, uh, for the first skill. It's a very important when you talk about Buster to mention the skills, in case you want to use them with, in case you want to use them because of Vich. And we have the passive skill, which is Magic Resistance C, Madness Enhancement A+, and her third skill is a bonus against Alter Egos. Her rank A Noble Phantasm is the Black Dog Gallatin, Horn of the, the, the Devouring Sun. It's a 5-hit Noble Phantasm, which deals damage to all enemies. HP increases on attack, uh, no, increase own AX HP by 3,000 for 5 turns, reduces own skill cooldown by 1. And the damage at level 1 is 300%, and if you have her MP5, it's 500%. Increase own buster performance for one turn, activates first. 20% buster, and all the way at the last level, it is 40% if you can get that full charge. And that's Bardigist. Um, uh, this is another, I think, pretty solid unit. I think she ends up doing not as much damage as I would have liked at the beginning. Uh, I have actually been using her. Of the three, of these units, I've used Morgan the most, Bargus the second, and then I haven't had a situation where I've really needed to use uh, Fairy Knight Tristan yet. I'm still waiting for a challenge quest to come up, hopefully soon. Um, but definitely just in terms of just like regular farming, her damage wasn't that amazing. The fact that her NP charger is tied to... Um, kind of a 15% isn't a lot. It's really more helpful in a party situation. Um, so she ends up, I end up using her to farm with hands and she does pretty okay with that, but also sometimes she fails to kill if I don't use all her skills, which she is not MP level one. I think she's around three and that's a little bit damning for a lot of reasons, but I will say, having said all that, the one mode I'm really looking forward to using her is the one where you have to do the grail front because <laughs> in the grail front, the way that she's built, she's just like built to be able to just like survive and fight like crazy. And I think in that kind of situation, like where it's more 1v1 fights with servants as you're going through the board and it's much more about trying to survive and dealing as much damage as possible, I think she's gonna really shine. There's a specific, a lot of specific units that I have where I'm just like, oh yeah, if I have this unit on the grail front, I just never lose. And that's where I use my quets at this point because I don't need her for uh, challenge quest because there's actually not that many fights that require a level 100 plus writer dude for the most part. Um, 
But in the Grail front, she does uh, extremely well, and I kind of would expect the same for Bargast here. But yeah, big fan of this unit. If you get her, you got a good doggo in your hands, and that's Bargast. Now let's get into the actual main meat and potatoes. It's a Morgan. If you're summoning on this banner, it's either because you, one, have Morgan, or you're trying to get one of these two. <laughs> it's never... <laughs> it's really all that there is to it, I think, at this point. Which is funny, I just mentioned, if you're summoning on this banner, you're summoning for the units. Duh. What am I even saying? Anyway, this is what Morgan does. Morgan is a Berserker. She's one quick, two arts, two buster. Uh, her first skill is Charisma of the Desires B. Increase own party attack by... <laughs> Increase party's attack for three turns. Charges own NP gauge. Reduces all enemies' defense for three turns. The attack up is 20%. The MP charging is 30%. And the defense down is 30%. Her second skill is the protection of the Lake Sea. Charges one ally's MP gauge and it turns into something else after you clear Avalon Le Fay, But the effect stays the same. I will not be clicking on that because of story spoilers. Uh, but it charges one ally's MP gauge. Increases party's MP generation rate for three turns. NP up is 20%, the MP rate up is 25%. Third skill, beyond the furthest end A, grant self gut status for one time three turns, increase own crit star absorption for three turns, increase own crit damage for three turns, grant self regeneration buff for three turns, reduces all enemies attack for one turn every turn for three turns, <laughs> reduces their critical attack chance for one turn every turn for three turns, and gains crit stars. 3,000 HP is what you revive with, 5,000 uh, crit star absorption, crit damage is 30%, the attack down is 20%, the crit chance uh, attack chance is down by 20%, and it's 15 crit stars, and this is on a cooldown of 7, the second skill is on a cooldown of 5, and the first skill is a cooldown of 6. Uh, very good, very good cooldowns. Passive skills, Madness Enhancement B, Magic Resistance A, Item Construction EX, Territory Creation B, Fey Eyes A, which is an increase of own attack chance uh, resistance by 20%. Her third skill is a bonus, uh, is increased own crit attack chance resistance against Saber enemies. And her Noble Phantasm is the Roadless Camelot, the now unreachable Utopia Anti Fortress EX 6 hits Buster, increases own damage against the Round, <laughs> the round Table Knight or Fey enemies for, by 50% for one turn, activates first. Deals damage to all enemies, inflicts curse status for by with a thousand damage for five turns in them, overcharges party's MP by one stage for five for one time three turns. The MP damage at level one is three hundred. I was about to say three thousand. That would be insane. At MP level five, it's five thousand. <laughs> it's five hundred percent. Apologies, my brain is not. I just got off of work and my brain is not working correctly. Overcharge effect deals extra damage against uh, enemies with a man attribute. It's 150% up bonus at charge level 1. If you get it to all the way to the final charge, or if you're using this MP after using this, then it's <laughs> you get the RP charger pretty easily. Um, and yeah, it's 150% at charge level 1, and all the way at the final charge level, it's 200%. And the man attribute is a lot of dudes. A lot of dudes have the man attribute on them. Plenty of them. So, Morgan. When Morgan... Morgan is a very interesting unit. Very interesting unit in that we've experienced this weird... Uh, when she first released on the JP side of the game, a lot of people didn't weren't super interested in her, and she didn't get as much uh, attention as the other two Fey Knights that released with her. Then when the story kind of got more people reading into it... And people were like super into Lost Belt 6, and then Vich was released, and Buster kind of turned into a much more important. You have to remember, when she first released, Buster was in absolute dire straits at that point. And then Oberon eventually released, <laughs> and all after her banner. So by the time that she had come back for her second banner, it didn't, re it made sense for them to return it because it felt like not enough people. <laughs> Respected Morgan enough to go like, wait, 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 if I, now that I kind of like her more, I really want her, and she's also really built for this meta. She's actually insane when you pair her with Vich and Oberon. You just don't understand that power until you actually do it yourself. Like, I heard tales of it, I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. I didn't really understand it until I had Vich and Oberon on my field and Morgan, and I was just like, yeah, I don't feel, I don't feel like many things could stand this. It is, uh... 
no understatement to say that Morgan is one of the best units that, are, that releases this year. The only reason she's not the best unit is because of Oberon and Vich. <laughs> because the supports are just so crazy. And then it turns into a kind of a chicken of an egg, a chicken and the egg thing. Who is truly the good unit between the supporter and the one doing the actual damage? It's a never-ending debate, but either way, I still think Morgan is built to be an insanely stupid unit. Even if you don't have Oberon and Vich, I use her in a team that doesn't use any of them. And I just take advantage of this ability right here, which gives uh, overcharge party, um, gives overcharge to your party. And it makes it very easy for the kind of other two dudes to kind of clean up after she's done her NP. The fact that she just gets an easy 50% here makes it so that you can very easily just give her an MP um, CE that only has 50% charge and just kind of go at it and it's very easy, it's very simple. She's Berserker. There's not a lot of weaknesses to Berserker besides the fact that, you know, the, one of the main weaknesses is, is that they instantly fold the second any damage comes their way. But the way, with her third skill here being a Guts and then also having this ability which gives attack minus down and crit chance, two things that I kind of heavily ever underestimated when I talked about uh, Kukal and Alter a long time ago and people, you know, came to his defense and said, actually, you're super, super underrating this ability here. It's very good. It's very, it makes it very, um, it makes it easier for Berserkers to survive when they have this specifically built into them. So I understand it now. Morgan is a great unit. You already, chances are, have summoned for her or, or tried to summon for her again. Even I'm kind of tempted to go for a second NP copy, even though I don't think I need it. She's a good unit. And then also, if you're a big fan of The Lost Belt 6, which I still have not read, I hear she's a very good uh, character in that as well. So that's Morgan. Is this banner worth going for with Summer coming right around the corner? Um, I don't know. It's kind of up to you, to be honest. I know Summer, comma, is extremely good and a uh, very good looper for arts as well. And also, there's a certain way to kind of look at the summer units. I think you have to look at it yourself because I'm also a big proponent of summoning for characters that you actually like. Like, even if all three of these units I think are extremely solid, it doesn't matter if you don't actually care that much about them and one of your favorites is on summer, then I would suggest you go. Just wait and go and chase for the actual unit that you care about. And I would say the same thing here. If like, hey, you see a lot of people going like, oh, why don't you just wait for Summer, but you actually care more about Morgan, then you should go for Morgan. Because you're gonna be happier if you have Morgan than if you skip Morgan and try and go for a Summer unit. Even if you do pull the Summer unit, you'll still think in the back of your mind, but man, this could have potentially been Morgan. It could have been something cool. And it's but easier to play a gotcha with zero regrets and also to make sure that you don't go crazy spending at the same time. <laughs> you need to find the perfect balance between the two. And yeah, and if you do end up missing out on Morgan, I have some good news for you. She comes back in, like, April. So, and let's see. The day is the 7th, 8, 9, 10. Let, I'm, not, I'm not doing the right, let's see. How many more times do we have in the year? 7, 5. So nine months from now, she'll be coming back. Uh, for this banner right here, for the Sea Monster Crisis Morgan Summoning Campaign, I think you're good to- if you can wait that long, by this point, you should be able to. What am I saying? Point is, if you want to wait for- if you're worried that she's not going to come back for a long time, she's going to come back. And she's going to come back again. She's so far been returned at a pretty healthy clip that I think eventually you're going to have a pretty good chance of getting them. It's not going to be like Miss Crane, where apparently she just, she just came back on the JP side of the game after not having been on a banner for, yeah. This was this is the next time Miss Crane was run, and Miss Crane was run before Morgan was, I can tell you that much. Uh, man, when the hell? Boy, when was Morgan, when was Miss Crane released? When was Grail Live? Was it in April? Yeah. This was on Grail Live. This is when Miss Crane came out. This is when she came back. Morgan, you don't have to worry about that. Morgan is gonna be back plenty of times. <laughs> so if you miss out on her here, don't worry. Just keep saving and you'll get to her eventually. 
And yeah, that's the end of the video, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you do, feel free to leave a like. Um, I'm very appreciative of the support. I've been saying it a lot in a lot of videos, but I am still waking up and going, I can't believe anyone cares about anything I say. It's insane. Thank you very much. And I'll see you guys in the next video as we continue to wait for Nero Fest as or some sign or maybe summer three not summer three maybe summer is next who knows at this point to be honest it could i could easily see it being summer it could be neurofest it could be anything maybe it'll be hunting quest no we already got the hunting quest i think uh let's find out huh we'll keep on waiting until next time good luck on your summons and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out